here we are in Maya and we're all uh, I think we all do this when we're first starting out we think uh, you know we're, we're working in a virtual environment it, you know it doesn't really matter how big you build things right but actually it does it turns out it helps it helps enormously to work in in real 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 world units as in you know if you if your object is six feet high you build it six feet high and so to make sure we're doing that, the very first thing we're going to do is go into preferences in, in Maya here, um, under settings, and check that we're in, we're working in fact in, in centimeters. Uh, that's all good. Um, go up here and look at the grid uh, settings here, and you'll see that the grid uh, is set to 12 units, like um, long width, uh, length and width there, and uh, one grid you know, a grid line every unit, which means that this every unit means a centimeter so this is basically 24 centimeters across right and um, that means if you're building a character here that was six units high it would actually be six centimeters high so what you want to do what we're going to do um, let's just say for argument's sake that our character is um, well about just shy of six feet tall that's that would turn out to be a hundred and 80 180 sorry I'll make this 500 and 180 units tall so if we make our grid 180 units that turns out to be our guy so from the front view here made an image plane here so here's a you know just the the guy from the previous episode um, just as an example and he is about we're saying he's about just shy of six feet tall so now uh, we've got a grid line that that kind of is the same height as our character um, to be sure and enough of that back into perspective mode so what I've done is to make Turn that off for a minute there. A, a box for a head. Uh, another box for his ears, nose, his top lip, bottom lip, and the eyes. I made some spheres for, and uh, even I made a, a sphere for the eye, and then I basically scaled that up. Made a half sphere for his top lid and his bottom lid as well and that's what I'm going to start with today so we're just going to make a little head um, and special prize to you if you guess who it is early so with that let's move to ZBrush okay we're going to begin by bringing in those uh, boxes that we made in Maya our little primitives um, no big uh, no big deal here um, yeah and the first thing we're going to do is just subdivide these things so the the reason I like working this way is because you can focus on like these these form these distinct forms like the overall shape of the head and then if you decide oh I need to move the eyelids or the eyes or the nose or something like that it's it's really easy to do that it's very it's what they call non-destructive right like so it makes it it makes it very easy to make big edits you know where and, and you don't you not like if you know if you get into the details a little bit it doesn't matter too much if you sculpted out the detail the details of the nose it's still very easy to move the whole thing um, and I, yeah I just find it to be a nice way to mass things out um, looking a bit like a ticky right now it's all good um, so right now yeah I'm just what we're doing is we're working on the overall shape of his head um, and I am basically trying to find the the skull right so I'm looking at reference for what we'll say we'll call our mystery our mystery guest here so I am looking at a you know reasonably famous kind of um, person um, from the media and I uh, found a bunch of images of the, of them on on Google and and so now I am looking at those various angles of, of our guest and um, just trying to imagine uh, what their skull looks like and now I am getting my my little my secondary shapes into place here um, so 
it looks a, a bit like a clown right now um, no worries we'll get there um, I am having a little trouble with my my hotkeys today and uh, yeah just now it's using the the um the trim dynamic brush I really like for just planing out things quickly and now we're at the top lip can move things around very easily so I could sculpt the, the lips in detail and then move them radically and not not affect that their shape at all so the one disadvantage with this this um, method is things will look pretty crude for a long time and you just you just have to be kind of okay with that you know so it's okay that things are just mashed into each other um, and it looks like mr. potato head um, but um, I, I, it's, it's a great way to start out. So often, often people, when they're sculpting like a, a human in particular, they'll have a base mesh all ready to go. But I'm, I, I want to kind of go back to square one, go back to scratch. If you don't, if you're starting from scratch, you haven't sculpted the person before, you know, this is the way I would do it. And this is the way I end up doing like, um, like maybe a creature or something, like something that's brand new, completely original form. Then you just, I just like um, you would with clay you just start throwing it together you know quickly making a little eyeball um, I feel like I find it's very important one of the things that's really important uh, especially if you're trying to do a realistic sculpt is to get the size of the iris right so that's what I'm doing right now is I'm just kind of um, you know being a bit silly but I'm trying to paint uh, the iris the right size relative to the to this to the eyeball um, and this this will just serve as a guide for now so you know if we took this if we take the sculpt further like all the way to a kind of a final model then we would build an actual eye but in this case um, this is a kind of a temporary eye I want it to feel like a real eye so you know I'm painting in kind of a faux highlight there and there's our iris I mean our, our pupil there and throwing the toy shader and, and Bob Cerranti you've got an eye it looks it can look you know somewhat realistic in a render um, and and now uh, this is where yeah, having those separate eyelids is great eh? uh, and so we're trying to find the shape of our guests eyelid there and onto the ear so it make this this approach what's nice about it is it makes it very easy to get kind of complex forms you know like the overlapping forms the the, the sharp kind of edge of the air as it's penetrating the skull there the eyelids later on um, the lips it's going to make it easier to make those shapes um, whilst working in, in, in big movements across his face right oops And that's yeah. So these starting to look still like Mr. Potato Head. I think the eyes might be a little bit wide apart right now. And that's that's where this method makes it very makes it very easy. I could just grab these eyes and move them closer together anytime I want. Let's kind of organize things a little bit here. And now I'm going to try and find the skull a little bit more on this on the head. Remeshing, uh, it's quickly dynameshing is you know, it's um, that's the fantastic thing about the, the most liberating thing about Z, about ZBrush if you're new to it is the fact that that topology doesn't matter, you can you can remesh it at will, um, which is which it's just which is really nice. When I'm sculpting, I, I try as I as I dig into it to kind of follow the form. Um, so I try to make my brush strokes go in the direction of the form I'm trying to create, if that makes sense. So if I if I was sculpting a sphere, I wanted something to feel round. I would I would use curved brush strokes across the surface to pull it out. Yeah, and I'm using the the trim dynamic tool again. I feel like uh, when you're, especially if you're just starting out in ZBrush, it you can do a lot with very little. Like, 
you could you could do a, a, probably a whole model with I would say that the the clay tubes brush trim dynamic and maybe move topology those those three brushes and of course if you hit shift and you can smooth things um, will get you a long way so that's the great thing about ZBrush you can you can you know, do very a lot without really knowing much about it so here I'm really kind of trying to find that you know the, the structure of the skull underneath his his face here find the anatomy under his face and then I'll come back and put some flesh across it right so it's a little bit I am you know looking at the reference and trying and seeing the skull underneath there and now now the, the advantage of having the you know the lips being separate meshes it makes it very easy to to go in there and sculpt inside the mouth <laughs> Definitely, it's still, you know, it's going to look weird for a while. I prefer looking at it without all the features on almost at the moment. And I've gone and I've just gone and welded in that top lip and just dynamished it so quick. Um, decided I didn't need to have that separated out. Fun pot lip noses. So this is this is really where this technique comes into its own is you know when you've got those complicated forms like the nostrils as they collide with the face and those things are you know you can do it but it's it's just awkward trying to sculpt it as one contiguous mesh it, it helps to start just to start out to literally have it kind of constructed it almost as if it is you know um, separate and and then you know, and then you get those nice sharp overlapping forms, or those forms that are you know pressing against each other. It's much easier to create them that way. Cool. Okay, so I've done a bit of a Julia Child here, and I had this uh, sitting in the oven already baked. This is uh, so basically what we've been looking at a little further along, and this is about the point where I think, okay, I'm I'm feeling you know reasonably happy with things and it's time to kind of just you know bake it all down onto one mesh and we'll do that next week <laughs>